Welcome back to Patrick's Garage. Today, I got some news. I thought I was dining the Yamaha, but I had some big issues with that one. So it took a long vacation. As I don't know exactly when to, or when I can afford replating the cylinders and buy new pistons and all that yes but coming up episodes i'll show you a picture of the um, yeah, wait a second not coming episodes i'll show you a picture of nika seal plating and uh, probably both cylinders is equal as bad i have only lifted the head on one and i can show you some footage later on or in between right here uh, and as there are a couple of thousands money 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 and uh, my plan is to fulfill the the garden as i have dug it out and uh, not me a company has done that and i'm uh, planning for making tarmac all over and uh, yeah um, but coming episodes will contain, contain making this one fully functional again because there aren't any Nikasil that will flake in this one. <laughs> so you heard it, yes, the Nikasil was flaking in the Yamaha on both cylinders, and two uh, Buster's pistols went to junk. And just before that, yesterday, I had a coil blew up. <laughs> there has been some issues with that one lately, so I'm quite fed up with it. So I'll take my time making that one good again and um, start all over with that one later. But I got three, two bikes still. I got the Husqvarna and I got um, three, oh, four, sorry, Husqvarna the twin project build and i got my cafe as a project which has at the moment the cart engine i will adjust that a little bit more because i'm quite curious if i'm giving it some more fuel it will go a little bit harder but uh, that's for another episode i will just tell you now about uh, this one it got the balance shaft it's right here the bearing holder on one side oh it's dropping oil whatever and i will update this of i haven't decided how yet but in some way i will update this and make it more functional it is home made so i can calculate with some errors and it's a cool project because there's so much work into this and i want it to work i've downloaded it 67 as it sits right now but the new project then send up uh, send up I had send up when I was 15 years old had a moped a Mustang Mamba and that one yeah, today I would say top notice record speed run I, I geared it quite low actually but about 90-95 kilometers an hour and this was back at 1986 <laughs> many years ago many moons ago and for many years and I heard also people say and for many years I've been curious how far can I take a Sydlap engine people are saying there aren't anyone made 20 wheel horsepower with this cylinder. It's a um, uh, Superterm Athena, six tran transfers and one exhaust. And this has a sax head, it doesn't matter. Uh, I will modify probably everything to get where I want. There's a lot to do. Uh, this is a four speed engine. It's good enough, could have been a two-speed also, but I will make brackets and mountings to be able to mount this one 
in the cafe eraser also as that engine is uh, meant to be a, a, a dyno mule and it's dropping a lot of oil from this one right now let's see what I can do with this one uh, I'll say the sit like that for now wait a second man 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 everything's always an issue I need to tighten up my way of things I'll, I'll put this right here for now uh, uh, mm, 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 mm. yeah I'll show you later a little bit about Nick and later or I'll put, put a picture somewhere so this one then I have simulated the cylinder in the Mota X and noticed that the most restrictive part on, on the piston controlled engines uh, piston controlled intake manifold this one is the size of it you need to go way bigger way larger to get any flow but you need to make it you cannot just port away because you porting upwards is no damage but porting it downwards will hurt probably the intake duration and made, uh, make the engine almost undrivable if you're going too far and I got this Hopi ignition belonging to this one but I'm not sure I will use it but it's good to be able to use it I will probably borrow the PW no not W PVL no Ignitech system from this one to this one to be able to build my own ignition curve to squeeze out everything I can and um, there will be a lot of modifying I will make a pipe I have calculated the pipe already but I'm not sure I will use that one just yet I have set the durations in the intake duration is not set yet but exhaust and uh, transfers are set to 196 and 134 or it was not 136 I can't remember uh, my mem memory with numbers aren't that very good but it might be an interesting project for you to follow of course there will be some manufacturing first to make engine mounts in the cart frame no not cart frame the cafe as a frame to be able to make this fit I need to buy a sprocket also and uh, some small things to get it to be able to, to run it first uh, quite is interesting though as it is a special heart, a special place in my heart for old Sundar engines because I had them when I was so young. And uh, I also started to grind rods in my CNC, my newly bought little CNC machine. And I'll show you a little bit about that also, kind of right now, somewhere or in the screen. And back from that, the result was alarmingly good, actually. Uh, I made first two rods. I um, 
made them equal to roads I had uh, that were, yeah, but I didn't use. And then I made uh, a couple of rods that were equal on idle as rods I had that was working on idle, but was way too rich on top. Then I made, uh, it was lean on, in the middle of throttle movements, so I made a curve on the rods and first try, success. <laughs> Actually, really good. And yeah, I was about to dine on Yamaha, but the last thing I did yesterday was a last little test talk and it sounded bad. It sounded like a wood cutter tool inside the engine. I thought it was the something, something with the primary gear in the from crankshaft to the clutch because TZR engines are sensitive to that. But I took that apart today and no issues with that. So I turned the clutch and almost no, the clutch basket and I felt well that was really bad with compression. So I lifted one hand and yeah all went south in my mind. <sighs> no signs of any damage on the spark plugs. A little bit rich still, but really bad compression. We need to shake it together. So I'll set up the camera and we'll... Oops. We'll... Uh, right there. Oh. Chug along. We're done. No Nicasil left. Right here. No, it's it's gone. Often I usually do not get depressed by hurting these things, but three cylinders now from the same company has flaked the Nika seal. And I have used the, the quite sloppy also. Uh, ring gap. So it isn't the ring gap that's tearing off the... no, not the ring gap. The, if the ring gap is butt together, it might flake off the Nika seal because it acts like a, a, a knife if it gets too tight. But that isn't the issue. I got sloppy settings because I like it never to be an issue. Uh, and yeah, well, it's depressing, but I thought, well, just move ahead. Uh, yeah, someone can buy new things for me. <laughs> I'll be glad, but I, nah, I won't beg for it. That's other guy's problem. Uh, so I'll start modifying this one, not today, and uh, start making things with this one happen. And next episode, I will probably run the cart engine on the on the on the not the dyno maybe the dyno i don't know but uh, probably on the street again i will get it a little bit richer i noticed it was quite lean actually well when i was out giving it some last weekend no not last weekend a couple of weekends ago so with that you know the issue the yamaha is down vacation or might be vacation forever actually now nah, I set it to the side for a while. Uh, and then I'll uh, start making projects with the cart engine and updates with the cart engine, maybe the Husqvarna and the uh, uh, Minarelli Twin and this one and this one. So that's where we are and yeah. We'll just uh, sign out from here and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Ah.
Ah, ah.